to you this morning as a living sacrifice. Lord, we want to love you with all our heart, our strength, our mind. Because Lord, you first love us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Use, Lord, our life, Lord, for your glory. Using for your glory. 
this is a very beautiful song. Even as the chorus says, Lord, I offer my life to you. What can we offer to the Lord this morning? The Lord is not interested in gold, silver, talents that He has given you. But He wants your life because He loves you. He redeemed your life so that you may belong to Him completely. So even as you say all that I am and all that I have, Let's lay it down before the Lord. Even your regrets, your past, your failures, the future that you do not know. And yet the Lord says that He has a plan and purpose for you, never to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. Lift up your hands this morning. Lift it up to the Lord. And let us give our lives to the Lord you may feel unworthy that you have nothing to offer to the Lord but the Lord loves you and he says come to me and I will make you the person that you ought to be so lift up your hands lift it freely to the Lord as an expression of total surrender to him your heart and let's sing the chorus. Lord, I offer my life to you. Everything I've been through, use it for your glory. Lord, I offer my days to you, lifting my praise to you as a pleasing. Lord, hear your people, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, hear your people, O God. Oh, Ramaya Hadro, Mashaka Ramaya Hande. to baptize you again with the Holy Spirit. Oh, ask the Lord to baptize you. Oh, Koromo Shakataramaya Handaro Mashaye. Oh, Koromo Shakataramaya Handa. Oh, let the rivers of water flow. Handara Mashakataramaya Handa. For out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Oh, Koromo Shakataramaya Handa. Oh, Koromo Shakataramaya Handa. Oh, Ramaya Handaro Mashaya. Oh, let the river of water flow, hallelujah, to refresh you, hallelujah. Oh, come, oh God, with your strength and your power. Oh, Holy Spirit, oh, the work of the Holy Spirit in your life, Handara Maya Handai. Oh, even as you surrender to Him, Handara Maya He, Ramaya Handai. Oh, Koromo Shakata Ramaya Handaro, Mashakata Ramaya Handai. Oh, Ramaya, Ramaya, 
Lama Kandaro, Mushokodo, Romoya Hande, E Ramaya Handaro, Ramaya Handaro, Ramaya Hande. morning to every one of you. Hallelujah. Shall we stand? Let's declare, I am deeply loved, loved greatly, greatly blessed, blessed and, and highly, highly favored. Look at somebody and say, you are deeply loved, loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Together, we are deeply loved, greatly blessed, and highly favored. Give the Lord a hand. Three things we want to stay focused. Love God, love people, love, love life. life. Tell somebody, Love God, God, love people, love, people, love life. life. One more time. Love, love God, God, love, love people, people, love life. It's not the circumstances nor the people around us that dictate us to love God, love people, love life. You choose to love God, love people, love life. Whether you're in the battle or out of the battle, whether you're on holiday or you're so busy, you know, doing your work. Love God, love people, love life. One more time. Love, love God. God. Love, love people, love, love life. life. And I am who God says I, I am. am. I have I what God, God says I, I have. And I can, can do what God, God says I, I can do. do. Lift up your hand and let's confess together. I am who God, God says I am. am. I have I what have God, God says I, I have. And I can, I can do, do what God, God says I can do. do. Hallelujah. Yeah. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. We declare and we confess. Praise God. You may be seated. Today, we're going to look at something very interesting. But still, based upon the word of God, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 11. Instead of taking the entire chapter, we just take First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 to verse 11. Okay? And uh, the last we did on First Thessalonians was chapter 4. And now we go to First Thessalonians chapter 5. It says here, the day of the Lord. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. But you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. Let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and a helmet of hope, of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, and whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify each other, just as you also are doing. Father God, once again, we want to commit this portion of Scripture into your hand. We ask you to break, Lord, the bread of life and begin to feed the multitudes here. We want to thank you that this is our blessed hope. 
And that, Lord, you have appointed us, hallelujah, not to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever work you have started in us, they are yea and amen. You are the author and the finisher. And Lord, you will bring it to pass. And that all of us will see you face to face. And again, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is a very comforting portion of Scripture. It talks about the day of the Lord. But concerning the times and the season, of course, here is talking about the chronological event as well as the date that's going to happen. Paul says, I don't have to tell you because you already heard from the Lord Jesus and from other disciples, which the Lord did mention. He talked about, you know, his coming will be likened unto teeth in the night in the book of Matthew chapter 24. For you yourself know exactly that day of the Lord, so come as teeth in the night. Teeth in the night, that means to say unannounced. It will happen. For they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come from them. Now, let me have the first picture, teeth in the night. The teeth will not announce his arrival. But when it happens, it happens. And the second picture, it says that peace and safety and then sudden destructions come upon them as labor pains. Can I have the next picture? Labor pain as of a woman. All of us, we are aware, you know. Not too long ago, people started to getting very popular with cesarean. But more often than not, you know, you wait for the labor pain to start. And nobody actually knows, not even the mother who is pregnant, correct? Uh, uh, but more or less, you can gauge roughly when, okay? So, but when the labor pain begins to start, some, we heard, it took them about 8 to 12 hours to deliver. But there are others, it's very easy, about maybe six hours, you know, and uh, not much pain at all. My first encounter with labor pain, I was at Universe Hospital, waiting for the delivery of the first child. And as I walk in, it's a government hospital, okay, a semi-government or government hospital. My, I tell you, there is this chorus, what I mean by chorus, like singing, you know. You have got the Chinese, the Indian, as well as the Malay and other races, pregnant mothers. They were inside the labor room, and each of them wail. It's not just one person, it is multiple. You know, it's going on. The entire ward is like screaming, screaming, screaming nonstop, like chorus, you know. The labor pain has started. So when it starts, nobody knows individually, okay? And yet, when it starts, it starts upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape, you know. Well, the scripture tells us that there is another sign concerning the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, okay? It's found in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 to verse 38. It says, it's like a Noah. Can I have the picture of a Noah? The ark? Nobody knows when the ark was prepared. And animals being led inside the ark. And so God says, I will be the one to shut the door. Nobody has ever seen the rain. No one had ever seen the rain. And so you say, what? You mean during Noah's time, nobody has ever seen the rain? Yes, nobody has ever seen the rain. But the Lord sends dew and mist to cover the entire earth. And so that the vegetations will grow. That was before the Noah's rain. Rain begin to descend. But when it happens, when the rain drops, you know, and the floods went up, oh, it's too late. It's too late. But it happens so suddenly. It's too late. So the scripture warned us, but you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day sh should overtake you as a thief. Here, there is this warning. At the same time, there is this assurance. It says that such things should not happen to you. Because you're the children of light. You're the sons of the day. So the day should not overtake you as a thief. Ah, as we begin to look into these 11 verses of Scripture, it's talking about a single event. It's talking about that day. All of us remember our birthday, don't we? That day is very special to us. 
that's the very day that you were born, that's the very day that, you know, you will remember for the rest of your life to celebrate. The next one, as far as birthday is concerned, some of us we do, some of us we don't, but it's not really that important. But I do remember my spiritual birthday. That was because it was very significant to me. I was up in Penang Hill, and that's where I accepted the Lord. I remember I went for that youth camp, uh, student camp, you know. That's where I came to know the Lord, you know. Then I started to join Penang First Assembly of God. When I came down, I was taken to 286 McAllister Road, correct. So some of us, we know that there are certain days very significant. Your birthday, your anniversary, you know, or maybe your graduation day. But to every believer here, to everyone who are seated here, to those who are watching online, God has appointed a day for all of you that you will not be missed, you should not be missed. That is called the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And that day, the Bible tells us that, you know, it's meant for everyone. Why? How do I know? Look at verse 9. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. What is ahead of you as a believer? If you're born again, spirit-filled, you're walking with the Lord, you're serving the Lord, you know, and you're putting the Lord first. Yes, you're not perfect. Though you fall, you shall not be cast down. But there is a day. It's called the day of the Lord. And it's your day. It's my day. And that day will come. And the Bible tells us that God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. So we see that our salvation cover, not just born again, and He redeemed us by His precious blood. Just now we sang that song, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed, correct? But the redemption is not started very strong. And then eventually you waver. And then eventually you fizzle out. You're not sure whether when that day comes, you will be with the Lord or not. No. Paul is saying that God did not appoint you to wrath, but to obtain full salvation. How many of us here, we know that we are born again. Can I see your hand? That day is yours. Amen. One more time, how many of you, you know that you are born again? You know that, you know, Jesus is your Lord. Can I see your hand? Amen. Hello. Those of you who didn't put up your hand, what happened? Okay. Now, this tells us one thing, and that you are ready, hallelujah, to see Him face to face. And God promised us. But for those who are asleep, that means spiritually they are dead. And for those who are living in sin, it talks about two things. Okay? Verse 7, For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, are drunk at night. Meaning to say, those who are spiritually dead. And at the same time, those who reject, they are so intoxicated by sin, and they reject the gospel truth. What will happen to them? The Bible tells us that for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, they get drunk at night. What is reserved for them is wrath. But for those of us, we are the children, sons of light and sons of the day. The Bible tells us that it is appointed unto us to obtain salvation. Of course, salvation is open to all, even right now. Those who are living in darkness, you know, those who get to hear the gospel, they are welcome into the kingdom of God by calling upon the name of the Lord, by accepting Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. But here, Paul particularly wants to target every one of us here. Hallelujah. Recognize this. Therefore, because of that, he is saying, you know, Christ has died for us. So whether we wake or sleep, wake means we are alive. Sleep means those who pass away. Why do I say that? Here there's a different meaning, the word sleep. It's based on First Thessalonians chapter 4. It says that those who are asleep in Christ they too will be raised, okay? So whether we, we, Christian, who wake or sleep, we should live together with Him, not just for Him. Live together with Him. Hallelujah! That means to say that God has so appointed that day, the day of the Lord, and for us is to obtain full salvation. Oh, glory, praise be to God. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. And there are still some believers that's just like in Paul's audience or maybe letters of circulations. 
And the readers, or rather, of his epistles, still not sure. And so this verse 11, this is what he said, Therefore comfort each other, edify one another, just as you also are doing. He says that comfort one another. In fact, this is not the first time that he's saying that everything that I've told you, go and tell other believers. Comfort them, encourage them, tell them their future is as bright as the promises of God. Your future, my future, is written in the Word of God. Your future, my future, is as bright as the promises of God. It's not just a life of prosperity. What can you take with you? Nothing. Your car, your house, your bank account, your assets, your fame, your fortune, nothing. You can't take anything from here, you know, when you see the Lord face to face. But one thing for sure, the salvation that you've experienced guarantee you to meet Him face to face. Your relationship with Him on earth knowing that you are a sinner saved by grace, that itself able to guarantee you a place for the day of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another, uh, edify one another, build up. Whenever you speak about the day of the Lord, you feel that you're being built up, being strengthened. You begin to stay focused and knowing that, you know, every inch that you're moving forwards, and you're getting closer of seeing the Lord, the day of the Lord. So here it says, now, I would like you to move from the day, now, moving from the day, now, to the events. You know, what actually happened the day when it comes? Now, that is found in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to verse 18. Let's read it. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, Okay, I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, as you sorrow as others who have no hope. Sometimes I just find that people have not gone through what it means by they have lost a loved ones. Their words are well-meaning, but it doesn't help much. What do I mean by that? They will come to you, be strong. Don't cry. You know, he's in a better place. She's in a better place. She's right now dancing with angels. Those words are beautiful. But it does not help. A desperate father will want his wife to be back from the dead and help to look after the children and be with him and then look after the perhaps, you know, elderly at home. Sounds so good about she's in heaven, a better place. She's a perfect rose. That's the reason why God need that perfect rose and pluck that rose and take it to heaven. All those words, it does not help. Just our words. Words with good intention. Okay? But this is what Paul says. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Instead of using the word date, Paul says, they are asleep. That's the reason why. So don't sorrow as others who have no hope. I tell you, when you lost a loved one, whether it is a child, a boy, a girl, your parents, your grandparents, your spouse, the heart is like being cut into a thousand and one pieces and nothing can put it back together. You know what I mean? Nothing, practically nothing can put it back together. And so it is naturally for those who go through bereavement, they are full of sorrow. But Paul says, I acknowledge that your heart can be weeping, but make sure, have this understanding, don't sorrow as others who have no hope. It's natural. Sometimes it's very cruel. We tell those who are moaning, those who are going through grief and bereavement, don't cry. Don't cry. Hold back your tears. When words fail, tears communicate. You understand? When words fail, and the person who is going through this bereavement, not able to express it, just one drop of tears, it expressed the entire sense of loss 
And that one drop of tears is enough to create a little bit more space for the congested heart which is full of sorrow. So don't say such thing as don't cry. You know, hold back your tears. Let it be. Because tears is created by God to communicate, to express, to bring relief. How many of you know that after a good cry, you feel so much better when you're on your own? And you cry out because you just can't say to anyone. You can't explain to anyone. You don't have the words to describe. You know, that pain, that intensity, that loss. And you just cry and cry and cry and cry. And when it is over, it's still like God put his hand on your shoulder and says, it's okay. It's okay. If you need another round of crying, go ahead. But it's okay. It's okay. And so Paul says, Go ahead and cry, you know, but not as others have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Christ. That means those who pass away in the Lord, okay? They are called sleep because God has so appointed that there is the next moment going to be awakened. Those who sleep in Christ. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. So he's talking about, hey, look here. He says that those who are asleep in Christ, something is going to happen. He says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ Go up first, then follow by those who are alive, remain, shall be caught up together, just simultaneously, together. Sometimes I wonder how together can be together. Hmm. How together can be together? Those who are asleep in Christ, raise first, then followed by those who are alive. I understand this better when I see a double, double rainbow. When I see a triple rainbow. I don't know whether you have seen any double rainbow before. One rainbow is enough to bring comfort, isn't it? Beautiful over the skyline of Georgetown. When you have double rainbow simultaneously, it's like one after another, you know? And sometimes somebody sent me a triple rainbow. That was even amazing. God's way is mysterious. None of us, we can fully understand nor describe. But Paul says, the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And we shall always be with the Lord, not just with one another. We shall always be with the Lord. I'm going to infer, will we be able to recognize one another? Will we be able to know that this is my loved ones? That one is my family members? Will we be able to communicate? I don't know whether we can talk verbally like here or we don't need to talk. It's just that there is this ability to communicate, you know, and transfer thoughts and feelings. But I do know that when the Lord Jesus talked about Lazarus and the rich man, they are able to communicate. Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom, but he's able to look down. And the rich man who was in hell was able to communicate and said, what happened here? Burning, give me a drop of water to quench my thirst. So it's not all silence and like foggy and misty and no communications and, and no awareness. Heaven must be a very beautiful place, you know? So beautiful that maybe we are able to communicate we can't even talking, but we're able to hear the brushing wing of the angels. They are supposed to be there to worship God. But whatever it is, Paul is saying this, that we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord, always be with the Lord together with our loved ones who have gone on before us. I always joke with our pastors and our staff. Penang First has got English congregation, Mandarin congregation, Hokkien congregation, Nepalese congregation, 
online congregation, whatever, you know, whether it's a seed program or Bible study and all that, and even prayer warrior congregation. But we have got another congregation, Western Road. Hallelujah. You know, over there, from the front to the back, so many of them. Hallelujah. But someday we're going to see everybody together until then. So the Bible tells us, comfort one another again. Paul is saying in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18, comfort one another. This should bring us comfort, should bring us hope. Amen? Now, let's get back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, okay? Chapter 5, verse 8. What then shall we bring with us? How shall we live from day to day? So, this is what he's telling the believers, eh? those who are waiting for the day of the Lord, okay? Chapter 4 tells us the procedure, what happened. Chapter 5, he says that, you know, but let us who are of the day be sober. Huh? Don't live as though like there is no life thereafter, no eternity. Okay? Putting on the breastplate of faith, love, and the helmet of hope of salvation. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, after he outlined the qualities of love. And this is what he says. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is what? Love. But that doesn't mean to say that he disqualified the rest. You need every day to live your life with this in mind. Faith. The just shall live by faith. Amen. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. He will lead you. He will guide you. Next is have love. If you love God, you'll be able to love the people around you, no matter how unlovable they are, or even yourself, no matter how unlovable you are, because you know that you love God and God loves you. He has not finished with you yet. And the third quality that we need to constantly, while waiting for the day of the Lord, is hope. Hope all things, believe all things. When you hope, you believe. Amen. Hallelujah. So we need to take these three qualities with us. Put on it, put on ourselves as breastplate, as well as helmet. Okay, the scripture, make it very, very clear. Backtrack a little. We talk about the day of the Lord just now. I mentioned to you, the day of the Lord is like birthday, a special day. But that day, it will be only one day for all. It will not be the day of the Lord for you is December and the day of the Lord for you is November. Somebody else is September. No, it will be one day. Hallelujah. And all of us, we are eligible. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are the sons and daughters of the day and light. Amen. That day will come. When we do not know, but it will come as teeth in the night, it will come like a pregnant woman, the labor pains of the pregnant woman. It will come like no what's while the world is eating, drinking, and you know, merrymaking. He says he will come, he will come. And when he comes, the date in Christ will rise first. And then those of us who are alive will be caught up together. Let me have the picture. Date in Christ come first. And then that's right. Next one. Caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Correct? And then another picture. Okay. That's right. Uh, these are just graphic, huh? just uh, uh, pictures concerning when it happens, it happens so fast. I got a picture in my mind. I thought it must be from the Lord. How is that going to happen? You know, when you put a magnet above the paper clip, not the plastic paper clip, but, you know, those steel paper clips, you just put it close enough, one powerful magnet, the rest will be what? Just within the split of a second, all the clip will just join together with the magnet. That's what happened when Jesus appeared. All of us, we were just caught up. It is his power that draws us unto himself. And meanwhile, we have him inside us. But that is this deposit of guarantee called the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, it just happened, it happened. Question is, well, when it happens, what happened to my clothes, shoes, 
spectacles. What happens to me? My handphone, you know, my handbag, my messenger bag, and what else? But what happened to all those? The Bible says that all this will be left behind. When you go up, you just go up. Because God is going to give you something new in the process of it. Again, we have to look at what Paul has written. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. This is what Paul understood as the Lord revealed to him. The day of the Lord, as well as when rapture happened, the day in Christ right first, and then those alive will be caught up together. And this is what he said. Because his audience are questioning him. How could that be? You know, we have got a mortal body. How could that be? That our body defiled the gravity. It's impossible. How could that be? We are no birds. You know, we can't fly. And how could that be? And this is what he said. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. The word is change. Everyone say change. Louder. One more time. That's right. The word is change. God is going to change. God has changed so many things in the Bible. The bad to become good. The ordinary to become extraordinary. Isn't it so? Like how Jesus changed water into wine. Something that is so ordinary, but it becomes a beverage that is so full of texture and quality, you know? And it's meant for celebration. And the key word is change. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. Another round of the word change. Verse 52, towards the end. Change is found in verse 51. We shall all be changed, and then we shall be changed. Verse 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and the mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. At this point, Death is so ferocious. It's unstoppable. You know? But I'm telling you, Christ has already won the victory. But the day will come, it will be declared all over the Christian graveyard and believers. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? Death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 56, The sting of death is sins and the strength of sins in the Lord. But thanks be to God who gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Well, Paul is saying that, look here. The word is change. From corruptible, become incorruptible. From mortal, immortality. Mortal speak about there's a lifespan. Immortality speak out it's endless, it's eternity. You know? So when this corruption, corruptible is put on incorruption, this mortal put on the immortality, our body, it says that then death is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh hate is where is your victory? The sting of death is in sin, the strength of sin is in the Lord. But it is Jesus, our Lord, who gave us the victory. Now, something that I want you to just consider. Actually, just leave that verse there so that there will be no distraction, okay? This is what Paul said about transformation, change. That is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It says that in verse 35. But someone said, how are the dead raised? With what kind of a body will they come? I'm sure you ask the same question, you know? And how foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed 
perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gave it a body as he has determined. And to each kind of seed, he gave its own body. Paul teaches it very clearly. Okay? For example, the watermelon seed and the papa seed is different. When you plant the watermelon seed, you get the melon. When you plant the papaya seed, you get the papaya, papaya tree and papaya fruits, okay? But they are given by God. It has got a body. So Paul is saying that, what's so difficult for you to understand? Don't you understand that there are different types of body? You know, the seed and the body, they don't even look alike, but each have got their own body. So let's carry on in verse 30, 39. Not all flesh is the same. People have this... People have the same kind of a flesh. Animals have another, birds another, fish another. So likewise too, the flesh of the chicken and the flesh of the fish is different. And they are different from human beings, right? The mutton, the beef, they are just so different. So then he moved on from seed to animal's kingdom. Then he moved on to the heavenly bodies. There are also heavenly bodies and there are earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the splendor of the earthly body is another. The sun has one kind of a splendor, the moon has another, and the stars another. And star differs from star in splendor. <gasps> During his time, they don't even have hobo telescope. Am I right? And yet he's able to talk things like that. Don't you think it's a revelation? You know? Then they have got this space telescope or whatever, then it makes sense, but look, he's so ahead of himself. And God told him that, you know, that another star, another kind of a splendor. So, verse 42. Will it be with the resurrection of the dead? The body that is so imperishable will be raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it raised in glory. It sows in weakness, it sows, it's raised in power. And it is sown in natural body, it raised in the spiritual body. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. So here we have, he says that, that our body is perishable, but God's going to give us a new body. Is it possible? The answer is yes. Do you remember the story of how Jesus died and then he rose again? And then when he met his disciples, it was not with the physical body. Before he died, before he was crucified, died, he had a natural body like you and me. You know, the Bible says his body can get tired and then he gets sleepy, he gets hungry, he gets thirsty. And that's the reason why he asked for water from the woman at the well. That's why he sent his disciples to do this one thing. To go and buy bread. And that's the reason why, you know, he uh, was in the boat while the storm was raging. And the Bible says that he was so tired that he slept because he has been working all day, all night, ministering to different, different people. But when he resurrected, the Bible says, at his will, he just appeared to the disciples. And the war is no longer a barricade. The war is no longer a division, you know, a fencing, the divide that could stop him. He's simply just different, different from the natural world, more powerful than ever before after his resurrection. So Paul is saying that the first Adam give us this flesh, but thank God the spiritual Adam is going to give us something new. Amen? Now, I would like to, you to look at this picture, and I've got one or two more thoughts to share with you. Let me have the picture of the moon and the planets and all that. That's right. And now the glory of the moon and now the glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. That was written 2,000 years ago. Today, we read about there are so many kind of a galaxy and Milky Way and Milky Ways of the moon. Recently, they have found another black hole or or something very interesting, you know. Well, Paul says that, he says, I know God has already revealed to me. So concerning our physical body, when we got transformed, change to another body, okay? So Christ is the first fruit. Next picture, please. If you want to find an example, he's the first fruits. What does that mean, first fruit? In 1 Corinthians chapter 
15 verse 20. He is our example. First fruit, a sample. You know, very interesting. Some church member, they took it literally. They came to the office and they brought these uh, ladies' fingers. They said, their pastor, this is our first fruit. I would like to offer you, to them, it's, oh, it's our first fruit, you know? And if I offer to my pastor, subsequently, the rest of the ladies' finger will be as green and big and juicy. The others that who came to see me, it's all oh, their first fruit, you know? It's a papaya. I want to give it to you. Their concept is, I want to honor God, and this is the best. And I pray that after that, more of this, the best kind of a papaya will be produced. Now here, Paul is using this teaching, or rather they followed Paul's teaching. The first fruit, Christ, exactly what happened to Christ, died, rose again on the third day, it will be you and me, our experience when we are changed. Say the word change. Louder. Faster. What? Louder. Louder. Faster. That's right. Change. Change in the twinkling of an eye. Now, so now you have got a full picture about the day of the Lord and then the process of being transformed and when you're transformed, what happened? You're changed, what happened? What kind of body will be given and all that? Hmm, interesting, huh? Don't you think so? Hello? Interesting, huh? Yes or no? Yes. Question is, what did the Lord say? Did Jesus say anything about it? Or is this just the hobby horse of Paul? I mean, yeah, he's an apostle, no doubt. Could it be that this is something that fancy him and then he likes to talk things like that and impress people that he's very intellectual? But did Jesus actually mention at least about there's such a thing called rapture and there's such a thing called, you know, uh, the coming of the Lord and all that stuff? Go check it out. Okay? Now, if you were to look at the book of Matthew 24, this verse, most of us, we are very familiar. I'll just read to you first, okay? Matthew 24, it says, verse 4, Watch out what no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many, and you will hear the wars and the rumors of war, and see to it that no one alarm. Such things must happen. And at the end, is still to come. Nation rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes and pestilence in various places. And all these are the beginning of birth pains. When I first heard of it, 1973, it's like, <gasps> what's going on? You know, I don't have any clue, and I don't see any sign at all that such thing is going to happen. Fast forward. 2022. How many of you know that? Everything that the Lord said, it come to pass. Hmm. I'm not just using the principal association. Let's begin. Watch out that no one deceives you. Jesus says, many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. Now, there are so many. I don't have time to take you through it. You know, recently, the Japan Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, he was murdered, right? He was killed. What's the story behind his death and all that? You go ahead and read about it. But I'm going to tell you that has to do with Unification Church, whether it is CNN or even Japan, Nippon, you know, what they have tried to explain about the, the reason of murder. We'll put that aside. Now, the founder of this Unification Church his name is called Sun Yong Moon. Next picture. Okay? And he's a Korean. He specifically mentioned that he is called to be the Messiah. Whatever work that Jesus has not finished, he is to succeed and to complete. Did he gain a huge following? He claimed himself to be the Messiah. His followers are called Moonies. They have got holy matrimony every year. Hundreds and thousands of people from all over the world. And they will be the one that appoint and match this man and that woman. This man and that lady. Different nationality and all that. Next picture. How could, how could the next one? 
How could people can be so gullible? But it happens. And Jesus says that, do not believe. And yet, he called himself a messiah. He comes out with a book called Divine Purpose, supposed to be uh, like, after the New Testament, that will be the sacred book. And yet, there are many people fell for it. Many will come in my name. I can still quote to you many, 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 but this is an ongoing, that's the latest. Okay? Deception. And yet people believe. Deception. You know? The next thing that Jesus said is a sign that you will hear wars and rumors of wars. Let's look at the next picture. Ukraine. I don't need to explain. Next is trajectories of ballistic mis missiles fired by China on August the 4th. Wars and rumors of wars. Am I right? Let's see what else he says. That you will hear the wars and rumors of wars. See to it that you are not alarmed. Such thing must happen. But the end is still to come. Nation rise against nation. Okay? Kingdom against kingdom. You have seen it just now. You know, China is having the practice uh, upon the visit of Pelosis, I think. You know? the American third powerful figure. Uh, the Lord is saying also the sign of famine. Look at the articles being published. Next picture. The coming famine. Uh, food shortage. Hey, this is not 1941, you know. This is the year 2022. You know, there are so many, what, Tesco, Lotus in America, Kmart, Costco, I think. Costco or Costco. Their food pile up, you know, over your head. How could that be shortage? But it's coming. The book is saying that, you know, listen, it's coming. Famine is coming. And next one, listen, America. Next one. Famine is coming, okay? Pestilence. COVID-19. Next picture. Next picture. Monkeypox. What else? Everything that the Lord Jesus says come to pass. Earthquake. I'm no CNN, so I will not declare to you nor uh, announce to you which place, which country, what time. This is collectively January 2022 report about the amount of earthquake. Isn't that enough to tell us one thing? That the word of the Lord is telling us that He is coming back very, very soon. Particularly, you know, when you see this sign, he says that I'm coming back. Now, he mentioned that rapture. Did Jesus mention about rapture? Matthew 24. Matthew 24, he says, verse 40, two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Matthew 24, verse 41. Can I have the picture of the man left behind? Yep. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken, the other one will be left behind. There is always one that don't believe out of the two. So the Lord talked about rapture. Rapture will take place. And he says that look out. Look out for these signs. When this thing happened, you know that Redemption is draweth nigh. What was that? Let's look at Matthew 24, Scripture verse 15 to 22. Okay? About the end. Just please take note. Therefore, when you see the abominations of desolation, these are the words of Jesus, uh, spoken by Daniel the prophet. He acknowledged that Daniel is a prophet, standing in the holy place. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountain. Let him who is in the mouse, house top not go down to take anything out of this house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. Okay? But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be a great tribulation such as never been before since the beginning of the world until this time abomination of desolation. What's that? Put it simply. The Jews, they have got this perfect holy temple. I went there at least four times. 
But what is left is only the, a part of the wall, which is called the crying wall, where the Jews continue to pray. Okay? You can insert little prayer notes inside. Okay, a lot of people from all over the world, they do that. And as they pray, they cry out to God, uh, remembering formerly it was a grand temple. But actually, it's already prophesied that the temple will be destroyed. Just now, these are the words of the Lord. And he's saying that, look, look out, I'm coming back. When you see such thing which is impossible, when it happens, I am coming back. And one in the field, the other one, both working, one will be caught up, one will be left behind. One stay at home, one will be caught up, one will be left behind. Nobody is spared. When rapture takes place, it takes place universally. At home or in the field. You and I, we don't have to get ready. We just need to, hallelujah, hold on to what God has taught us. Put on the breastplate of faith, love, Helmet of hope. Hallelujah. Because everything that Jesus says will come to pass as he has already shown us in his word. Okay? Last picture. Then we will conclude. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. Let me recap this. The day of the Lord. Next is the rapture. Next is a changed body. Next is the certainty of what Jesus says, he says it will come to pass. Now, as we conclude, I got to say this to you. What then shall we do? Do this. Hmm. That's right. Do this. Nothing, nothing, for, nothing is left out, not, not communicated. Okay? Verse 45, Matthew 24. He says, Who then is the faithful and wise servant? whom the master has put in charge of their servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time. It will be good for that servant whom master finds him doing so when he returns. Here it says, be faithful. Whatever God has appointed you in his house, whether you are an usher, worship leader, musician, Sunday school teacher, or whether you are departmental head, you're involved in mission, or whether you are, you know, involved in the online prayer group, anything, faithfully serve, continue to serve, so that when he comes, he finds you faithful serving. Hallelujah. You do not know when that will be, but when he is coming, hallelujah, let him find you faithful serving. Shall we stand? Father, we want to thank you and praise you for your word. We want to thank you that your word gives us clarity about what will happen. Your word gives us, Lord, the assurance that that day will come and that we are ready because Christ is in us. And Lord, when that day comes, we know, Lord, the date in Christ will rise first and then those of us who are alive will be taken up. But most importantly, we'll be changed, we'll be transformed. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are able to see you face to face. Amen. Praise God. But while waiting for that day, help us to put on the breastplate of faith and love and most of all the helmet of hope and lord help us to busy continue to serve you to be faithful while we are waiting for that day and that day will surely come just as you have said lord there will be wars rumors of wars famine earthquake pestilence and false prophets oh god help us not to be sway not to simply believe in signs and wonders but to believe in your written word and stand firm upon your word. And Lord, we want to continue to serve you faithfully. Lift up your hand. Father, I commit these brothers and sisters who are here and those who are online, that they will continue to be faithful whatever you've assigned them. Lord, help them to do it faithfully and do it well. We thank you, Father, that when you come, you will find us, amen, a profitable servant. Thank you, praise you. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen. 